All right, in this video, we're gonna look at factoring by factoring out the greatest common factor. So the greatest common factor uh, is the largest number or a variable that goes into all of the terms that we're given. Um, we might see something just be a little bit generic. Let's say if we have x, y plus x, z. So these two terms have something in common. They have an x in common. And what we do when we factor by factoring out the greatest common factor is we take that x and we write it out in front. So we factor out the x and then we write the leftovers from each term. So I basically take each term and divide it by the GCF and put inside what's left. So here we would be left with y and the second term we would be left with z. That's the final factored form. As I said in the previous video, when something is factored, it looks like you want to multiply it. You should, you should want to use the distributive property on something that's factored. Um, and we can check this. So if I was to distribute the x, would we get back where we started? And the answer is yes, we would. But this is the factored form, and this is called the simplified form. xy plus xz is the simplified form. When we're factoring by pulling out the greatest common factor, um, you want to check both the numbers. So whatever strategy you have for numbers, knowing if things are divisible by 2, 3, 5, um, and then also when you're determining the greatest common factor of variables, you would look for the smallest exponent. So I might write that down because it's kind of important here. To find the GCF, of a variable factor, look for the smallest exponent in any term. And I know that seems a little bit weird, but aren't we doing the greatest common factor? So shouldn't we look for the biggest exponent? But no, because we're looking for something that goes into everything. So if we have x to the sixth plus x to the fourth plus x to the third, all of these would have an x to the third factor because x to the third goes into itself x to the third goes into x to the fourth, it would be x to the third times x, and it goes into x to the sixth. So here, if we have those three terms, the GCF would be x to the third. So we look for, as long as they all have that variable, we would look for the smallest exponent. And keep in mind, if something doesn't have an exponent, then it has an exponent of one. Okay, so, uh, oh, and one more thing before we get to factoring. Generally, the leading term, that's the very first term we see, if it has a negative, we always factor out a negative regardless. It's not part of the GCF, it's just the standard way of factoring. So anytime we're factoring in this video, in the next video, in the video after that, any video, any polynomial that we're trying to factor, if the first term is negative, factor out a negative. Okay, so letter A, we have 6y minus 42. We have two terms here. This term doesn't have a variable, so we're only gonna factor out a number. Six and 42 both have a factor of six. So we're going to factor out the 6, which means we're going to pull it out in front, and then we divide both terms and rewrite what's left. So 6y divided by 6 is y, 42 divided by 6 is 7. So this would be the final factored form for letter A, 6 times y minus 7. And you can quickly see if we distribute, we would get back to where we started. In letter B, I see that the leading term is negative, so no matter what, I'm going to factor out a negative which also means when I go to divide, I divide by a negative. Um, 14 and 21 share a common factor of seven. X cubed and X, so this would be like X to the first. We take the least of those, so we're gonna take X to the first. This is Y and this is Y, they both have a Y, so we're gonna factor out Y to the first. Okay, so then we're gonna open up our parentheses. Remember, we're dividing each term by this GCF, so we're dividing by negative seven XY. Negative divided by negative is positive. 14 divided by 7 is 2. x cubed divided by x is x squared. And then y divided by y is 1. So that just, uh, we'll, we'll just, there it is, it's out in front. Okay, then we're going to divide this one by negative 7xy. Negative 21 divided by negative, actually that turns to a plus. 21 divided by 7 is 3. x divided by x is 1. y divided by y is 1. So we're going to close our parenthesis behind the 3. This would be the factored form for letter B. So this one's a little bit different because we did factor out the negative and then the GCF of the numbers, the X's and the Y's, and then we put what's left inside. I know that I might have made a mistake if I look inside and this one still has an X and this one still has an X. So you can just quickly check, you know, is there still anything that they have in common? And we can say, no, they don't. 
So we feel pretty good that this is the factored form for letter B. Letter C. So letter C, we have the leading uh, term is positive, so that's good. 4, 12, and 28 are all divisible by 4, so we can factor out a 4. And then we have x cubed and x squared, but this one doesn't have an x, which means there's no x in part of the GCF, because it, all three terms would have to have a variable of x, and the 28 doesn't. So the only, part, the only GCF here in letter C is 4. That means we're going to divide all three terms by 4. 4x four cubed divided by 4 is x cubed. Negative 12x squared divided by 4 is minus 3x squared. And 28 divided by 4 is 7. So this would be the final factored form for letter C. For letter D, we have 8x squared y minus 12xy squared plus 4xy. So we have three terms. We're going to pull out the GCF of all three terms. So 8, 12, and 4 all have 4 in common. So first I'm going to pull out the 4. Now we have x squared, x, and x. The least is x. So we're going to factor out an x. We have y, y squared, and y, the least of which is y. So our GCF here is 4xy. We're going to divide it into all three terms and put the leftovers inside parentheses. When I divide 4xy into 8x squared y, 8 divided by 4 is 2, x squared divided by x is x, and y divided by y is 1, so I can just, uh, just leave the 2x. Next, we're going to divide 4xy into negative 12xy squared. Negative 12 divided by 4 is minus 3. x divided by x is 1, which times 3 will be one, uh, 3. And y squared divided by y is y. Now we're going to divide 4xy into, well, 4xy. When we divide into itself, so I kind of nonchalantly just throw away the 1s when I'm dividing and there's other factors present. But here, 4 divided by 4 is 1. x divided by x is 1. And y divided by y is 1. Well, that's 1 times 1 times 1, so we need to say plus 1. That 1 is like serving as a placeholder for this here. It doesn't go away. It's not 0. It's plus 1. So we need to be really, really careful that we don't forget. If I have three terms and I factor out the GCF, inside the parentheses, I should still have three terms. 